Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Mirkel Gorbachev, the Chairman of the Mount Zion Group of Institution, Dr. Abraham Kalamannil, the uh, delegate from Russia, Dr. M. M. Srinivasan, the principal of the college, the dignitaries on the dais, the management, the staff, and the students of the institutions, as well as who have come all the way from other colleges to participate in this conference. Today, I have been asked to set the rhythm for this conference. As you know, rhythm, once it is set, the conference goes very smoothly. Hence, I am delighted to accept this invitation on behalf of the Xi'an Group of Institution. And uh, I have a great pleasure to always talk to students' community because they are the backbone and pillars of our technology development in this country. Uh, today, my specifically the lecture will be a, a technical lecture of highly multidisciplinary where what we do inside the small laboratory in the Trikakara campus at Cochin, basically, which is the Naval Physical and Oceanographic Lab under the Ministry of Defense. As you know, India's, yesterday from the newspaper you would have seen, the GDP or the gross domestic product crossed two trillion dollar mark in 2014, according to the World Bank data. After taking 60 years to reach this one trillion mark, India added the next trillion in just seven years. India is now a two trillion dollar economy. All this was possible because our technology development. So the technology development, as you know, with the new government in the Delhi is moving towards make in India policy and so you see where we are going to generate quite a lot of job opportunities for all of our country youngsters. And also we are moving to digital India, as you would have seen, this is a week of digital India and the right time we are celebrating this particular technology conference. And for all this, the technology is very, very essential. Hence, I feel this technology development and its management, unless you manage the technology, it will go havoc. So this is very important for this country, which is fast growing. As you know, we are now fast moving towards a developed nation. As Dr. Kalam says, by 2020, India should be a fully fledged developed country. Uh, maybe I would like to come that side and uh, have my presentation because it's a slight presentation. I'd like to It'll be another 20 minutes where you'll be going through a, a series of, just I wanted to introduce the the small laboratory which is working, the only defense lab in Kerala. Today, I thought I'll give you what is actually required for our naval, uh, what is called the systems. The Indian Navy, you know, the armed forces have got three wings, Army, Navy, and Air Force. What we work for is for Indian Navy. India has got three basically commands, as you all know, Southern Naval Command at Cochin, Western Naval Command in Bombay, and we have the Eastern Naval Command in Vishakapatna. So these three are the, okay. Next slide, please. This is just to show that we are underwater. Basically, all the technology is related to ocean and its related systems. Next, please. If you just see the history of this laboratory, it was established in 1952 as called the Indian Naval Physical Laboratory. Uh, it became a part of the defense research and development in 1958, a small barrack in those days in the Southern Naval Command. Then it was renamed as NPOL. The earlier it was called Indian Naval Physical. The oceanography, as you know, the subject is very important for underwater application. Hence, this laboratory was renamed as Naval Physical and Oceanographic Laboratory in 1968. So almost we have completed 60 years. We are the oldest laboratory in the DRDO. Next slide, please. These are the various DRDO labs 
as you know the most important uh, strategic in indian is, is the atomic energy the defense and the aerospace industry so these are around 52 nearly laboratories distributed all over india right from cochin to leh ladakh in the north and to the left to the jodhpur and to the right up to the gwalior and uh, pitogar in mussoori and other areas the southern naval where we were initially located inside the naval command now we are out in a trikakara in a very sprawling campus of around 35 acres next slide this is basically the vision of the laboratory the center of excellence for design and development of underwater surveillance system and this is what we call as a campus one where our mission is to develop underwater sonars and it's related for all our naval platforms like the surface ships we have submarines we have helicopters this is basically the mission next slide please we have another facility called the underwater acoustic research facility this is a campus in idiki that is a place called kulamau earlier you know we have the india's second biggest arch dam built by canadians in 1960s the entire kerala state electricity board was there who was doing this construction and subsequently once there the entire uh, technical work was over there was an excellent facility was offered and we just grabbed this opportunity because any of these underwater systems before going into the sea it has to work in a fresh water so this area is basically a good campus next slide please where we have certain facilities like barges we have boats and certain uh, area where we can go there and do some underwater testing. Next slide. We have a campus three, what we call a platform, basically a ship called a Sagar Dhvani. Dhvani means sound. Sagar is ocean. So this is basically the name Sagar Dhvani, where we do a lot of underwater acoustics research. Next slide. This is our technology competence, where we have from anti-submarine warfare oceanography, we do modeling, we do material study, we have transducers, we have sensors, we do electronic signal conditioning and processing, and we do the design. So this completes the entire multidisciplinary area where students of mechanical engineering, the electronics engineering, electrical and electro, I mean, uh, the electro communication, and now information technology, computer science, all this knowledge is needed to develop such systems. Next slide. Our human resource is 595. We have 64 percentage of people working in systems, 16 percent in technology, and 20 percent in science. And we have service officers like the naval commanders who also supports because the final user of the naval system is the Navy. So they also work along with us. And this is our strength where we have BTEC, MTEC, and PhD working in this area. Next slide, please. In a management, uh, what is called, if you have to manage a very big project like a program, you might have seen the missile program and other things in India, how does the, with the short of manpower and really crunch, really we manage this show? We have a lot of technical group heads, we have a lot of projects. The matrix structure, basically it is called in the management, where you have to take the project requirements and the technology development in a matrix approach which will take you to do many many projects the p1 p2 p3 are all the project directors and we have other side is the basically the engineers or technologists who guides these people to make the successful project next slide please you know this must have you might have seen in the newspapers quite a lot of platforms like uh, Aircraft carrier is now being built at Cochin shipyard and uh, one is co come from INS Vikramaditya. We have naval frigates, we have corvettes. These are all different types of ships where, which is used by Indian Navy for different purposes. Next slide. In a, basically what we call ASW means anti-submarine warfare. Because underwater we have a lot of, uh, what do you call uh, ships, surface ships we call submarine. They are all to be detected by our uh, different techniques. So we have a sonar. Basically, you know the sonar is uh, like your counterpart of radar. When, uh, how do you see what is happening in the airport? Some flight is coming from all the way. 
you send electromagnetic waves, the radio waves goes and detects. And that's how you know a flight has to land this first and next flight has to come. So it tracks in the control tower. Similarly, the counterpart of radar is a sonar, sound navigation and ranging. Basically, as you know, the sound waves under the water travel very fast at a rate of 1,500 meters per second. It goes to the object, it reflects back, and you know what is the range where your objects are moving. Hence, these are the different types of sonar where we are using. We have got a variable depth, bow mounted, submarine, and from even helicopter, the sonars are dunked to know the your position of the underwater target. Next slide. An active sonar is basically you have a signal from your uh, body, you transmit, you go to the target, it gets reflected back with an echo, and you capture them. But only thing in the active sonar, you are revealing your position. Next slide. In a passive sonar, you just listen to the underwater noise and sounds, and that is being directly picked up by your sensors. Next slide. And the third area is, you know, a lot of things have happened in Bombay. A lot of people have entered into the waters through the coastal areas. So there is something called seabed protection. In fact, our Dr. Kalam's vision was to protect the entire Indian coast with the entire census like a garland starting from Bombay to West Bengal. If you have such a garland, nobody can enter. So such type of works are called seabed. So the sensors are put in the seabed for anybody intruding into your waters. Next slide. In a ocean condition, if you see, this is the typical temperature variation, your sound speed variation. This plays a very important role. Cochin University has got a uh, oceanography program. There is a department of marine sciences where students do MSc, PhD, and then they go for any of these oceanographic studies in India. There are a lot of opportunities in this oceanography, like there is a Ministry of Earth Science right now. We have got National Institute of Ocean Technology in Chennai, and we have different Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. There are so many Center for Earth Studies in Trivandrum. All this comes under this ministry where they recruit oceanographers, atmospheric sciences, and different types of these types of a special field, actually, rather than the conventional other areas. Next slide. And these are the typical sound profile which goes in the underwater. And there is something called, uh, these are the how the sound propagates in water. There is something called a shadow zone. There is called some duct. These are all the areas where sound will not reach. So you need to take something to the deep sea and detect these underwater objects. Next slide. This is basically a ship. And the sonar is generally fitted on the hull of the ship. That's why it is called hull-mounted sonar. Because from the hull, you know, uh, it has to go and send these waves and detect the underwater moving submarines or whatever vehicle. So these are called hull-mounted sonars. Next slide. If you look at this configuration, it's uh, highly electronics, where you have the transducers, we have the data recorders, we have the signal and noise simulator, and these are typical electronic cabinets where all this processing is done. Next slide. A typical naval ship looks like this, and you have a lot of things inside the ship. You know the difference between a passenger ship and a naval ship. Naval ship, hardly any comfort is given. In the passenger ship, you have all the comforts. Here you have a lot of restraints because maximum weapons, sensors, and other things are mounted. So the design is a very major challenge. You have to go with your all constraints. You cannot have your own system, what you want in this. You have to design this by seeing the platform, what is the space availability, how to install it. It's a challenge for the engineers. Next slide. A typical ship looks like this. Nowadays, you know, shallow water is gaining importance. Quite a lot of hap things are happening in and around our coast. So this the technology is also growing faster. Next slide. A typical inside the ship, you will see a similar electronics. You see how the, uh, basically, the cabinets are there. And we have to, the operator sits here and senses the underwater moving targets. And he gets the signal. And that's how, by training him, these are all some simulators where they have to train. And then they detect. And they are all throughout uh, the day. They have to monitor day and night, especially the naval platforms. Next slide. If you see, these types of electronics generate a lot of heat. They have to be controlled. So thermal management is very important. All these electronics, whatever you have in your ship, generates a lot of heat. In fact, if you can convert this heat into for some useful, that itself is another major challenge. 
If you see, this is a typical system, what I am showing, how these things are tested in the laboratory and then put on board to know whether how this management can be done. Next slide, please. Then from the surface, you go to submarine. Submarine also has got different types of sonar, passive, active, and in a submarine, if the sonar does not work, it is something like your car's headlight is gone. In a car, if your headlight is gone, can you drive in the night? It is impossible. Similarly, if the sonar is not working in a submarine, you cannot take the submarine out of water. So these types of submarines are very, very, the sonars are very, very important rather than the surface ship because the life is more complex. You know, quite a lot of accidents have happened in the recent past. They are all to be very, very, safety is very important and all this important, the designer's challenge is there and you need to go underwater and test this. The scientists need to make the life sacrifice for this. Thank you. Next slide. And if you see the uh, design, there is something called the computational fluid dynamics. The aerospace engineers will be aware. Similarly, we have the underwater body moving also can be studied by what is called the CFD, uh, where you know the, how the pressure distribution goes and the design is done by understanding this concept. Next slide. Please. So these are just to give you a feel of how the CFD is supplied to Next slide, please. Now you have seen surface ship, you have seen submarine. The sonar is also coming from helicopters. You see, a surface ship or a submarine cannot move fast. In the case of some attack, the uh, airborne system can always fly from your uh, ship. Hence, we have some system being deployed from helicopter and this goes down into water and it comes up. So this gives the information to other uh, people that a likely target is in this place. So this is called the dunking sonar. Next slide, please. A typical system, we go to our underwater acoustic facility at Idiki and we do all the initial trials and this gives you a tentative, the building block. These are some of the subsystems which are there in the, which needs to energize this body which goes from helicopter. So this is basically the typical configuration what I have seen. Next slide. And the seabed, when you go, you need to study how this array has to be launched. This is called a seabed structure. What you see is a flotation buoy, and then you have a cable which is electromechanical and this is connected to the sensor. You, but the most important challenge here is the power. If you put something in the sea, where do you get the power? Power has to come from the, we have a solar panel here uh, above the buoy, which generates the required uh, voltage for sending the power to the systems. So this is a big challenge for deploying such structures. You can put only in the coastal areas and other things, but if you want to go to the deep sea, the power is a major challenge. Next slide. We do simulation for understanding this, how to deploy the structure in the sea, what is the force coming on the cable, and how to launch. This is just the typical exercise what we undergo in the sea, but you need a very, very thorough planning and management of this type of activity. This is called sea trials. We go to the sea, we go on board the ship, we launch the structure and until the safety of everybody has to be ensured before the system is launched. And again the system has to be recovered back. So this involves engineering, technology, management, all challenges. Next slide please. This is just to show we do a software called ArcaFlex which simulates all these underwater basically systems being deployed from the surface ship. Next slide please. This is called some underwater bodies, as you know, like torpedoes, which has got sensors and it is being towed behind the ship. These are one more system where you need to study this basically in a place called towing tank. When you design this body, you do all theoretical calculation, but you have to test this in a tank. We have a facility in Vishakapatnam to do what is called underwater towing. So you will know the forces, whether the body is behaving, its stability is fine. All these important things will be taught. Next slide, please. So this is a typical uh, towing tank, <laughs> what you see, where you are seeing the body is coming underwater. We have captured through the video how it is assembled. We put sensors and we monitor this. <coughs> Next slide. And all these systems have to be connected underwater. So these are all different types of connectors used in underwater application, which has to withstand underwater pressure, corrosion, all these properties of the sea has to be taken care. 
and they are all electrically connected to one system to another system. Next. <coughs> and these are all underwater cables. It has to be terminated. It's a challenge. If this cable fails, your entire system will go into the sea. So you have to take utmost care in design of this cable, its termination, and it's a skilled job. We are people, only trained people can do this type of activity. Next slide, please. These are some of the products we have developed. We have uh, underwater connectors, we have hydraulic motors, and we have underwater bodies. All these are different from mechanical and electrical or whatever you call a multidisciplinary product. You need the knowledge of all the branches of engineering and science. Next slide, please. This is uh, typically the cable. The cable is one of the most vital, which is called uh, heavy because it weighs around 4 kg per meter. Light is basically, it is neutrally buoyant in water. And these are all some of the body's products developed. Next slide, please. Winches. You know, you must have seen winches in Parani, but that winch is different. This is called sonar winches. Anything, when you want to deploy in water, you need this cable to be wound on a drum. So these are the different types of drum. These are all manufactured by giants like LNT and other people in India, and they develop all these products. What you see is a ship bond winch where this thousand meter of cable is wound on the structure. Next slide, please. Then another area is what is called, now coming up is called MEMS. You must have heard this, micro-electro-mechanical systems. They are all, you see, earlier our sensors were very big. If you want to measure something, depth or in the water, they are all weighing 2 kg, 3 kg. Now it is going to micro and nano level. So they are all, suppose accelerometer, you know what it does. What is uh, underwater temperature sensor? All this is now basically coming in this field of microelectromechanical system where we have progressed in this country. Next slide, please. So the application, you know, acoustic sensor, accelerometer, the CTD, the conductivity and temperature depth sensor, vector sensor, imaging sensor, all this has got different application. But developing this sensor indigenously in India is a major challenge. The fabrication is a very big challenge. So we have come up to this stage to develop this sensor for future application. Next slide. Now we move to what is called spin-off. See, technology is being developed in this country, in these laboratories. But you know Dr. Kalam, after the missiles a successful program, has developed a caliper for the physically handicapped people. That was basically a technology which has come out from the missile program. Similarly, we have also developed what is called a Sanjeevani. It is a sensor, you see this policeman who I have holding in his hand. There was a big earthquake, you know, not one earlier. This was done in uh, 2002 or three. Somebody gets under that uh, building, you know, the life is still there. They are not able to be saved. So these type of devices will tell you at least somebody is alive or not. The breathing, because these are basically hydrophones which are embedded into the system. And when you move along this debris, at least you will come to know there is some body lying here. The man may be alive, at least we can go and save him. This is a gadget which we have developed. The technology is given to Keltron and they are supplying to the various places where we have such emergency rescues. Next slide. The another product what we have developed is Tarangini. The name is given. Basically, a lot of accidents are happening in schools, you know. The school bus goes, falls into water, and immediately you do not know what is the depth in this area, and a lot of people struggle. So basically, a lot of information. So we have, from our technology, we have developed what is called a small sensor, where you can at least know what is the depth in this location. Next slide, please. These are again some of the products. Next slide, please. I think already you have shown, sorry. Okay. Next slide. <coughs> This is another, uh, what is called Dwani. Basically, it is a small tank where we show the principle of a sonar to a college student or basically to a naval trainer, how this system works. Because it needs a transducer, it needs a signal conditioning and electronics processing. Entire thing is made in a very compact and it is given to the naval commands for training the basic people who are joining the Indian Navy to understand what is this sonar system. Dwani, that is the name given because it is sound. Because with the underwater sound only, you can detect all these uh, moving targets. Next slide, please. So these are some of the features which I have shown. You know what is active sonar, what is passive sonar, and what is all. This is a basic science uh, principle. Physics is being used to study this. Next slide, please. 
just to show what are the various facilities we have, a cluster computation. You know, this MEMS device has to be made in a clean room. There is a class called 1000 and 100. Unless this is so much dust proof and you wear a separate dress to do this, you need this. Then we have a modeling facility. We use quite a lot of softwares. We have the research ship. We have an acoustic tank and the EDK facility. Next slide, please. This is just our uh, computational facility where you do the processing and uh, computational like CFD and other area. Next slide. This is that uh, clean room where MEMS devices are basically assembled and tested to develop this product. You need to wear this because not a single dust can go into your uh, components or the electronics. Hence, when you enter this room, you have to wear this dress. Next slide. This is an acoustic tank. Basically, it's an underwater tank. Weighing a length is 50 meter, 20 meter by 18 meter deep, where all these initial transducers are tested. See, in a sonar, the transducer is the heart. Once till you design this transducer, your sonar will not function. Then comes the electronics, then comes your mechanical other system. So this is being tested in such a tank. Next slide. Then we have a facility called materials and acoustic. Basically, all this material which are going into deep sea, at 200 meters, 300 meters, you do not know what pressure will come to the material, whether material will buckle or how it will work. Because as you go down, the temperature is very low and your pressure is high. You can study this using such facility. Next slide. We have variety of work environments for the scientists. From the laboratory, we interact with academics, we go to factory, we go to dockyard, we go to the platform, and the people are put in all these areas to work. Next slide. So uh, let us come to today's technology management. How can you manage the technology? You need a networking because technology is growing and not a single individual can work. That's what I want to say. <coughs> Technologies cannot be developed by single individual group. Institutions can be built with vision and support from all colleagues. But networking is the key word for the success. You need engineering colleges, you need IACs, IITs, industries, strategic sector. All these people have to come together to make a technology for the nation. That is why I wanted to stress the networking of these uh, colleges, academics, industries, R&D is needed for successful products. Next slide. If you see a university and an industry, fundamental difference. You have a lot of social responsibilities, but an industry has got shareholder responsibility. If you university, you do the basic research. But in an industry, it's an applied research. He cannot do basic research. He, university, you create new knowledge, but they develop products. Pure scientific driven, here it is specific objectives. One particular industry has to focus his product, otherwise he cannot survive. Publication, it comes from the universities and collaboration. Here, ownership and secrecy is important because he's another competitor. Sharing of material, control of material. Basically, this is the fundamental difference between our university and industry. Next slide. So what I wanted to convey is an integrated approach. Bring all the stakeholders, researchers, industries, entrepreneurs, users. It can be strategic as well as commercial, government funding agencies onto a single platform. You continue the research, develop technologies for specific application, expose researchers to funding, facilities, and industry requirement, create awareness among users, create opportunities for the incubation. And nowadays, you see a lot of uh, incubation and entrepreneurship has been started in our Kerala. Quite a lot of uh, opportunities are given. If you want to start an entrepreneur, I think if you go to the info park and present your ideas, you are being encouraged. Next slide, please. So just to say what is the main conclusion, you identify the requirement and create groups which have capabilities to deliver the result. Provide facility, monitor the progress, and mentor the groups connect them to users, leading to your technology development. The technology can be also developed from an educational institution. Management, very important, management of the technology, and then the product goes for commercialization. Next slide, please. So this is my last slide, just to tell you, science, research, technology, product. Why, what is our final aim? We cannot stop the research. You have to go to the end product. This is the famous quotation given by our Dr. Kalam. Science leads to the development of technologies. The availability of technology, that is most important. So that is where we play an important role, which will lead to product. It should be the mission of young and experienced scientists 
I will say our young students also should come into this to see what they make scientific discovery, which will lay the foundation for the entire technologies for the country. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Guru, the true teacher, he wipes away the darkness of ignorance and fills the minds with wisdom and knowledge. He creates people who can contribute to their thoughts, to the society, and to the world. A true teacher is the replica of divine power. I take this moment to call upon with humbleness Dr. M. Srinivasan, Professor, Research, Thoms State University, Siberia, for the keynote address. Yeah, good morning to one and all. It's a respected the chairman, vice chairman, managing director, and our scientist, Dr. K. Sudarshan, and our director, Mikhail J. Garbato, and all other dignitaries, professors, and directors, HOD staff, and all. So I would like to share with you so what are the main benefits of the conference? Conference conclusion or this one conference, this one benefits after the rhythm this 2015. The main thing is, first is innovation. The first is innovation. The, the second is you are going to, this one connections. First is innovation and connections, education, research, and then opportunities, and then leadership. So first I would like to share with you what is this one innovations. In this rhythm 2015,